Asia-Pacific is home to half the world's population. Around 2.5 billion people live in India and China combined. Across the Asia-Pacific region, countries vary hugely in size, culture and the economic strength. In Australia, New Zealand and Singapore, per capita GDP is tens of thousands of dollars. In India, Vietnam and the Philippines, poverty is widespread. With China and Japan, Asia-Pac now contains the world's second and third largest economies. The region in total is worth around $15 trillion annually and growing. Not surprisingly, multinational corporations across every sector are investing heavily. The extraordinary pace of growth of the region has been matched by growth in the pharmaceutical market. By 2014, it is projected to be worth $156 billion. The market is far from homogenous. It ranges from sophisticated healthcare systems like Australia, Singapore and Korea to extremely rudimentary services in countries like Vietnam. Branded generics represent more than half of the market. In India, a brand can have as many as 20 to 30 generics and yet still grow. The Asia Pacific region is already a huge economy. It's roughly 10 trillion US dollars in, in size. It's already representing 17% of global GDP and more than 50% of the world population is living in, uh, in Asia Pacific. The pharma industry is growing quite rapidly in Asia Pacific because of four factors. High level of urbanization, an aging population, a higher prevalence of chronic diseases and the ability to pay is increasing year after year. AstraZeneca has a very strong position in Asia Pacific. We are one of the top multinational companies in this part of the world. And that's driven by an excellent portfolio of products, by very good people and by an excellent infrastructure. And that makes us one of the best and most successful companies in this part of the world. China will become the largest market in the region, contributing to about 50% of sales in 2014 and 70% of incremental growth over the next five years. China healthcare environment is changing rapidly. We were the number one pharma company in China. Uh, we are very proud to say that this year, 2010, will be our first $1 billion year. Uh, uh, this year, AstraZeneca will be one of two companies that break $1 billion in the pharma market in China. We foresee to overtake number one position again in probably two years' time, hopefully soon. The Indian market is poised to grow at a sustained growth of 14 to 15 percent over the next 10 years. This will generate the third largest incremental value in any market after the US and China. That sheer value in the market it will reach a close to 55 billion market by 2020. The sheer value incremental is what presents a unique opportunity for AstraZeneca in India. In Asia Pacific, we need to uh, identify talent early on and focus on developing them from within. More importantly, I think we've got to take more risk with our internal talent, even if they're not 100% ready for a particular role. Market growth will vary greatly, while China and Vietnam should see growth of 20% per annum. Other markets like Australia and Taiwan expect growth in single digits. Healthcare infrastructure varies from advanced to basic. Pricing and reimbursement systems vary from largely government-funded markets to primarily out-of-pocket payments markets. We are poised and ready to support the aggressive growth in the Asia-Pacific region. Asia-Pacific Business Services is uh, part of the Finance Fast Forward Initiative in AstraZeneca. In the last two years, we have actually moved across work, transactional finance work from 12 markets in the Asia-Pacific region. And by January 2011, Japan will also be supported from the centre. As part of this transformation journey, we are actually performing all the transactional finance activities in Kuala Lumpur, 
on one single ERP platform. With only 130 million people, Japan enjoys one of the world's highest per capita incomes. It has one of the lowest birth rates in the world and in 2009 faced its first population decline. This, combined with a rapidly aging population, will create pressure on the country's social services. The Japan farmer industry has been driven by the aging uh, population. Japan has one of the most rapidly uh, aging population. As more and more elderly people uh, using more and more of uh, our products and other companies' products are driving uh, considerable market growth. Japan, as you know, is the third largest economy in the world um, and is the second largest pharmaceutical uh, market. Uh, basically, a hundred billion dollar, almost a hundred billion dollar pharmaceutical market. Healthcare is really important to the Japanese government and to the people in Japan, and they invest significantly in it. In fact, it's one of the world's healthiest populations with an average lifespan over 80. Unfortunately, we have delays of the launches of mega brands of AstraZeneca. Same because we have launched this January, next year is coming next year. That is a big delay from the global. But of course, it is fortunate for us too, because we are going to have a huge opportunity of these brands, plus crystal and oncology products. As you know, Japan has been grown by 10% on average last 10 years. We are going to grow significantly, and we are going to add $1 billion on top of current sales. Japan is set as one of the key strategic markets in AstraZeneca. Asia-Pacific is an extremely diverse and dynamic region. It requires differentiated strategies to succeed in each of the markets, especially those which we have committed to leading. But the price for success is huge, not just over the next five years, but as the foundation of our future success.